Welcome to this Real Python Exercises course, where you'll practice scraping and parsing data from the internet. Our exercises courses are all about training. You'll train the process of writing code by solving carefully selected exercises. You will also train reading other people's code and communicating your thought process. Doing all that, you'll practice the concepts that you've learned about in an associated course or tutorial and help make them stick. In the upcoming lessons, I'll introduce you to tasks, give you an opportunity to solve them yourself, and then show you step by step how I solved each of them. You'll go through three steps for each task. You'll learn about the exercise, you'll code your own solution, and then you'll compare your solution and the process that got you there to mine. When I walk you through a task, I'll explain what I do and also why I do it like that. That'll give you a chance to compare not just our final solution, but also how we got there. Maybe you'll gain some insight on the process of getting from a task description to a working solution in code. You'll tackle three exercises in this course. The first exercise asks for pure standard library Python. You should use urllib to scrape and parse text from a website and then string methods to extract information from it. Then you'll add abstraction layers on top. So you'll actually see that the first exercise is going to be quite challenging. And then by adding abstraction layers of libraries that are just designed for web scraping and parsing, it'll get easier. In the second task, you use an HTML parser for web scraping, and specifically, that'll be beautiful soup. In the third task, you learn how you can interact with HTML forms using the mechanical soup library. Before starting this course, you should have read through the introduction tutorial on web scraping with Python. If you went through that tutorial, then you're well equipped to use the tasks that I'll throw at you as training sessions. You can also explore the site that you'll work with under the URL olympus.realpython.org slash profiles. And then you can click around a bit. For example, if you click on Aphrodite's profile, then you'll see the page that you can see at the moment on the slide. The concepts that you'll practice in this course are making web requests using urllib, using string methods to extract information from text data, parsing HTML using beautiful soup, and filling and submitting forms using mechanical soup. If you're somewhat familiar with these concepts and you want to fortify your knowledge with practical programming tasks, then this course is exactly right for you. If you're feeling playful like Poseidon and this little fish, and you're ready to do hands-on programming, then keep watching. I'll see you in the next lesson, where I'll introduce the first exercise. Here is your first exercise task. You're meant to write a program that grabs the full HTML from the following URL using Python's built-in URL lib library. And then you see the URL, which points to a specific profile on that Mount Olympus page that you've seen before. And specifically, you want to scrape the profile of Dionysus in this case. And once you've scraped the HTML, you should use the dot .find method on the resulting string object to display the text that comes after first the name and then the favorite color. So you want to pick out these two specific pieces of information and really just display the info that's noted there on Dionysus' profile page, basically. <laughs> without any leading spaces or trailing HTML tags. So you want to clean it up so that then you just get Dionysus and his favorite color as the result. And note that you should only use Python standard library to complete this task, right? So that means the built-in URL lib library and then string methods. There's other ways to do this, of course, and later in the course, you'll tackle this in other exercises. But for this first one, stick with the standard library. OK, so now go ahead and solve this task for yourself. And once you're done, or if you get stuck, you can move on to the next lesson where you can watch me and my approach to solving the challenge. The first thing that I always want to do before I start any sort of web scraping project is to check out the website using my browser. I want to understand what the structure is like and also just view it and see what I can find on there, basically. So I just opened that URL inside of my browser. And you can see we've got this cute picture of Dionysus and then his name. We've got some hometown, favorite animal, and favorite color, right? So what we're interested in is Dionysus, which I can find after name colon. So that information is one piece. And then the second piece of information I'm interested in is wine, which I can find after favorite color and then a colon in the space. OK, so 
that's me just viewing the page as a normal user. But as a developer, I'm more interested in seeing the markup of the page. And here in my browser, I can do this by right-clicking and going to view page source. And then I get the raw HTML that builds up this site. You can see this isn't super pretty HTML, which is also part of the point of this website to show you how to deal with somewhat malformed HTML, right? But you'll also encounter this a lot if you scrape pages from the internet. There's a wide range of quality of HTML out there. Okay, in this case, we can see that the name that you're looking for is inside of an H2 header, level 2 header. We have an image here, and we have some line breaks. And finally, you can find favorite color, wine. Okay, so this is the structure of the website that you have in here. Both of the information that we're interested in are inside of a center tag, and there's some images, there's a title. I don't like to see that all in uppercase. <laughs> but anyways, that's like just the feeling you get when you look at HTML that's all not that pretty. Anyways, that's not the point here. So we want to get out this information. And again, like it, it should be this Dionysus and it should be this wine. For the first task here, you're supposed to just scrape the whole page and get the HTML as a one chunk of text. So what I want to end up with is essentially this HTML wrapped in triple quotes, if you want to, right? This is the, the first result that I should get by scraping this page. And then after that, my next task is going to be to pick out two pieces of information and clean it up, Dionysus and Wine, and make sure that I just get that text. And I have an understanding of the task that I'm up against. And now I'm going to start coding and head back over to my editor and tackle writing the code starting in the next lesson. Here, I'm using VS Code to solve this task, but you can use any editor that you want. And I've also created a new empty folder inside of my real Python folder that I called Web Scraping. And in here, I'm going to get started writing the code. So first of all, I will start a new Python script. So I'll right-click new file, and then I'm going to get name and color. So I'll just name it get name color.py. As a first step, I'm going to copy paste the URL that was given to me there on that slide. So here I have this URL variable that points to the page that I just looked at in the, in the previous lesson. So this is the page I want to scrape. I need the URL lib library from the Python standard library. And specifically, I need the URL open function. So I'm going to import that by saying from URL lib dot request import URL open. So this is the function that I want to use to scrape the HTML from the URL here in line three. I can do that by calling URL open and passing it the URL. Then I need to save this to a variable, and I'm going to call that HTML page. So that'll be the whole page. And then I want to work with this as a text string, because then I want to use some string methods to actually find the information that I'm interested in. So I will decode this into a string, and I'll call it HTML underscore text. To do this, I have to call dot read on the resulting HTML page. So I'll say HTML page dot read. And also, I will decode it. That's a good measure to make sure that it is decoded using UTF-8. I will also give you some links later on where if you're curious about why you need to do this and <laughs> a couple of deep dive rabbit holes around decoding and encoding. For now, I'm just going to decode it like this and take a look. If you remember, what I want to get is this HTML text that we've inspected in the previous lesson. And I hope that this is what I'm going to get if I print it out. Let's go ahead and run that. And this looks pretty good. All right, there it is. So now I have that whole HTML that you saw earlier in the browser. I got it through my script. I scraped it and have access to it. And I'm also going to confirm whether it's actually a string, because that's what I want to work with. So I run this again. And it tells me that, yeah, I'm actually working with class string, which is great because that means that then I can use string methods to find the pieces of information I'm interested in. All right, so let's get started on that in the next lesson.
I'm ready to write the maybe more tricky part of this task because now I need to find specific pieces of information from that big blob of text that I got here. So let me show you that again. I can run this, get name color, and I get the whole HTML text returned. But now I want to pick out specific pieces of information. I want to get just this part where it says Dionysus, and I want to get just wine out of there. And I should use the dot find method for it. Okay, so I'm going to take some quick notes because otherwise I'm going to forget everything that I need to do. I want to find the information after name and I want to find the information after favorite color. That's what I want to get, these two pieces of information. And I want to get them by using string.find. Let's spin up a little Python interpreter to play around with this and figure out how I can best get this information out of this giant chunk of text that I have. So I'll type Python in my terminal to start a Python interpreter. And then I will define some variables. So let me get an example by copying this h2 that contains the name. That'll be my HTML for now. So, oh. Of course, I need to wrap it in quotes. So what I'm trying to do here is just to give me a small example to play around with so that I figure out how to get the information so that then I can put that into my script. I'm just making my HTML a little smaller and then playing around with this. So the string I'm going to want to search for is name colon white space. So I will also save that as s. And I will name those better when I put them into my script, but now I'm just experimenting, right? I can use html.find and give it that string, and Python is going to return to me the index where I found the first occurrence of that string, which is on index 4 of this smaller string. I'm going to do a short side note here because I don't love to use find for this type of tasks because I think there's another string method that is a little more descriptive, which is called index. As you can see, like dot .find returns the index position where it starts. I don't know why it's called find. The thing is that if you use html.find and pass it a substring that isn't present in your string, then it gives you minus one as an indicator of like it's not in there, which I find pretty unintuitive. So I prefer to use dot .index, which does the same when it finds the substring, so it gives me the starting index, but it raises an error if it doesn't find the substring. So I find that a little more descriptive. So it just tells me value error, the substring wasn't found. Okay, but that's the end of my little rant against find. I'm still going to use it <laughs> because that's what the task asks me to do, right? A little more space here. Okay, so I have this HTML and I can find the start of it. Now I also need to find where the string that I found ends so that then I can start getting the information that follows after it. I can do that by working with the length of the search string, the substring. So this is six characters long and it starts at index four. So I could do four plus six, right? I could go to index 10 and then start looking there. So let me see if I slice my example HTML starting at 10 forward, I should get Dionysus and then whatever is the rest of it. So that's great. So I get the start. I can get the start like this. And now I also need to figure out how to get to the end. And um, one way I could do this is that since I'm working with HTML, I can expect that there's going to be an opening Angular bracket at the end of the piece of information that I want. So I could do something like HTML slice it to get to the information that I want. And then from there, I could again use find to find the index of the next opening bracket, which is going to be eight. So plus eight is the length of the piece of information in here, which means that if I slice my HTML from 10 up to 10 plus eight, so 18, then I should actually just get out the analysis. That works, and that's somewhat an approach that I could follow to figure this out because it will also work for other pieces of content that are of a different length. 
if I don't hard code these numbers, but but use the different uh, methods that I use to to get to them, right? I think that's probably an approach that I can roll with in this case. So in the next lesson, I'm going to take some more structured notes of this little exploration that I just did and then start working on it. All right, so I played around in my Python interpreter to find a possible approach to getting this information out of the big HTML that I've scraped earlier. Now let's take some notes on how to get those. So I want to get the starting index of search string. That'll be name and favorite color. Then I want to get the length of search string. I want to add the length to the starting index. And then what else did I do? Then I want to slice it, right? So I want to slice the HTML text from whatever the output of this is. How should I call that? At the length of the starting index. Okay, to get to get the end of the search string. <laughs> I wonder whether I'm explaining this too complicated. I want to get to the end of name colon space, right? This is where, where I want to start picking the information. And these first three steps basically are just for me to get to this point here, to this index. And then I want to slice the HTML text from that number onwards until, and then what I need to get is the next opening angular bracket and until there i want to slice it so i need to get the index of the next opening angular bracket and slice the html text from there to here basically and then i still want to remove the remove any white space okay those are the sub ideas that I kind of tried out in my Python interpreter below. They're not super easy to follow, so I could have probably taken better notes, but this is what I came up with now. And let's stick with this for that lesson. And in the next one, I'm going to try to actually tackle these inside of my script and see if I can get to the same endpoint that I then get the name, just the name the honest is printed out.